Personally, I prefer partnership whist. Uh, <laughs> this is more it. Aristotle, metaphysica. At last, something wholesome, something commendable about me. Uh, hardly, sir. That is the book in which you hide your secret Polaroid collection of naked ex-girlfriends. <laughs> really? Oh. Mm. I went out with a lot of nurses, didn't I? I don't believe those uniforms are authentic, sir. Notice the astonishing brevity of those hemlines. I believe all those girls are impostors pretending to be members of the medical profession for nefarious purposes as yet unknown. I'm on my way, sir. Uh, Lister, given that we've got about as much chance of getting out of this in one piece as a jammy dodger that's been dunked in hot coffee and twiddled about for three and a half minutes, <laughs> could you tell me what he's doing? He's customised the waste disposal unit, filled the eject system with petrol and sent it into a kind of high-impact garbage cannon. A garbage cannon? Here he comes! OK, bearing 09584. Ready, Crichton? Fire! Yes! Woo! 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 Yes! <laughs> Relocating Red Dwarf's vapor trail. They're closing in. They're all over the ship. They've got Hank and Ludo, Tina, Jerry. Tim, Gordy, Sam, they even got Jeff, at least I think so. I found a huge pile of his intestines on his bunk. Maybe the rest of him escaped, I don't know. What am I saying? Half crazed with fear. And now I'm next. It's just a matter of time before. Oh my God, you're beautiful. I can't resist you. Make love to all of us. Please, we beseech you. You heard them. <laughs> they want seed spreaders. <laughs> I'm going to apply. <laughs> you deal with the siren thing, I deal with this. <laughs> Call me paranoid, but you don't think they were these siren dude things? <laughs> <laughs> Even the brunette? You don't think there's any chance they're just two nice girls who just happen to want my seed for totally legitimate reasons? <laughs> I don't need to tell you this is a big disappointment. Damn vixens. How could they be so cunning? If anyone wants me, I'll be taking a cold shower in liquid oxygen. Come on, Lister, you're giving simpletons a bad name. More trouble, and they're heading straight for us. On my way back. Hi, Dave. Smacking out. Pete Trance's sister. Remember me, Dave. You lusted after me all through your puberty. There's nothing more potent than an adolescent fantasy. Don't you remember? You wanted me so badly. You even made a special hole in your pocket. And now, at last, I can be yours. How long has it been since you last made love to a woman? I admit it's been a while. For a Welsh shepherd who's allergic to wool. Oh, it's me. I'm in. Oh, it's getting pretty hairy out there, Crichton. It's for moose. Five seven nine six. Five seven nine six. No officer above the rank of mess sergeant is permitted into combat with pierced nipples. Hmm. Well, forgive me, sir, but I can't see how that's pertinent to the present situation. Five seven nine seven. Then. Oh, the hell with the regs! I'm letting him in. 
on your square head, be it. We're going to try some tests. A series of questions designed to trick and confuse you. If you fail to answer correctly, or for any reason hesitate, you will be shot. Rimmer, give us a break. Come on, Rimmer, do me a lemon. Right. Both right-handed, correct. You have a tattoo on your right buttock. True or false? True. It is dedicated to the one unbending love of your life. Describe the tattoo. You. It's a heart with an aug through it, and underneath it says in dripping curry sauce, I love Vindaloo. How did you get it, you? Planet leave on Ganymede. I went on the rise with Peterson, and he spiked me cocktail with half a pint of four-star petrol. When I next awoke, I'd enrolled as a novice monk in a Ganymedian monastery. I discovered the Vindaloo tattoo when I handed him my habit. <clears throat> Both of you, remove your right sock. Crichton? Thankfully, it turned out to be one of Mr. Lister's old sneezes, which had congealed on the radar screen. <laughs> How utterly charming. Instantly, that has become one of my favourite Lister stories. Surpassed possibly only by the time he used the deep space probe to de-wax one of his ears. <laughs> <clears throat> How are things fuel-wise? It's still with us. It's some kind of heat seeker. We can't outrun it. Ah, uh, that's it. We're deader than seersucker. What? Anything? Not sure. Something, but it's almost off my nasal spectrum. You'd better have a mighty damn fine explanation for what you've just done, Miladio. <laughs> Because where I come from, sticking your hand inside someone and pulling out their works constitutes a major chinning offence. Let's try to stand by. Forgive me. I merely converted your projection unit from soft light to hard light. Who is he? What is he? He's a genius, a saint. His cellular structure is unique. Genetic strands I've never seen before. Part living tissue, part mechanical. Do you think he'd be prepared to throw in his lot with us, join the crew? Why not? He doesn't know us. And what's to keep him here? <laughs> I mean, if you don't count the fabulous architecture, works of art, the constant banquets and limitless supplies, this poor sap's got nothing. We've got to persuade him to come with us. He'd get us back to Earth in weeks. Here is the feast. It is a traditional 24th century Mimosian banquet. Yo, brutal, me favorite. <laughs> Bring out the water cannons. There's a taste bud rat in my mouth. <laughs> How absolutely divine, Le Jean. Although I must say, our souls are already gorged, fit to burst with the feast of art laid out on your walls. I wasn't aware you had an interest in art, Mr. Rimmer. Oh, it's not just moi. Toot of us enjoy a good painting. Don't be mad. <laughs> Yo, Boston. Many's the night we while away the wee hours contemplating a Caravaggio, discussing its shape, themes and form. He is so right. <laughs> the pointy stick game doesn't get a look in anymore. Two dozen eight packs and a spare pair of sneakers in the icebox. Faultless, not an inch wasted. Ooh, chill to perfection. All your favourite music, all your favourite movies. Absolutely no Doug McClure. <laughs> Amazing. Doesn't even need tuning. <laughs> <coughs> Zippy chilies. <laughs> I think I took a real one. I 
couldn't have designed the room better myself. Gold taps with hot and cold running hair mousse, Velcro sheets that wax your legs while you sleep. Incredible. Enjoy your breakfast feast, Mr. Rimmer. Uh, good morning, sir. What does he want from us? Filthy walls, mud streaked floors, mop and bucket. I was in hog's heaven, sir. <laughs> Who is this dude? Some sort of human zoo type weird person collector? My thoughts exactly. We have to face the possibility that we may soon be led out of here and forced to mate with a variety of strange coloured voluptuous alien women. <laughs> <laughs> It is if prayers are ever answered. <laughs> I'll tell you something. When I finally get round to writing my good psycho guide, this place is going to get raves. And she came up with this truly award-winning escape plan. Ah, Legion. We have considered our position and have decided our best option is to make a new life here with you. <laughs> I would be deceived by that schlock plan from Revenge of the Surfboarding Killer Bikini Vampire Girls. Beautiful piece. Really comes alive when you hold it up to the light like this. <laughs> There's no such thing as an Ionian nerve grip. Now stand still while I hit you. <laughs> Ding! Ah! Go down, why don't you? <laughs> Ding! Your hard light drive's tougher than vindaloo mutton. This'll do the trick. You can't be serious. <laughs> Come on, you flat-headed metal dork. Put me out of my misery. Come <laughs> Oh, for God's sake, if you want a job doing, do it yourself. Stop! 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 Clearly, this is not working. I'm a hard light hologram, and as such, completely unknockoutable. I think you're right, sir. Crichton! Sorry, sir, I was just trying to take you unawares. Crichton! I'm trying to think, you rubber headed eunuch. <laughs> right. I've got it. Turn off my light, B. I can't, sir. I can't penetrate hard light. You'll have to extract it yourself. Uh, okay. Initiating ignition sequence. Is this really going to work? Oh, I see no reason why not, sir. All the tests bear out that this is indeed a fully functional star drive. If we've linked it up to the bug's existing engines correctly, why, we should be able to catch up with Red Dwarf in a matter of nanoseconds. Yeah, it's bound to go wrong, isn't it? Sir? It always does for us, every time. He's right. There isn't a dog in hell's chance this star drive's actually gonna work. Sirs, have we not learned in the last two days that if we all pull together, then we can become greater than the sum of our parts? That if we are of one mind and one desire, then there are no boundaries as to what we can achieve. Now, this star drive is going to work. Do we believe? We believe. We believe. Do we believe? We, we believe! believe. One thing. What's that? It did work. <laughs> My hair! <laughs> and we will not rest until this task is completed. To the glory of all Vindaluia, we bid you farewell and safe passage. Uh, Listy. And if you come across any of that humanoid garbage, send them my loathing and torture one for me. <laughs> oh. Hi. How's it going, bud? <coughs> A 
Human. And a humanoid. A hologrammatical human. A mechanoid who was a slave to humans. I had hoped for so much more. Um, I've no idea who you are, but boarding this vessel is an act of war. Ergo, we surrender. <clears throat> and as prisoners of war, I invoke the All Nations Agreement Article 39436175880932 stroke B. 39436175880932 stroke B? All nations attending the conference are only allocated one car parking space. Are you sure that's entirely relevant, sir? I mean, we're in mortal danger here, and you're worried about the Chinese delegates bringing two cars. Can't you let just one go? I was talking about the right of POWs to non-violent constraint. What, double eight oh nine three two stroke C, sir. <sighs> it's embarrassing as much as anything else. You're totally humiliating me in front of this xenophobic, genocidal maniac. No offence. Primitive. You'll be no sport at all. I have no alternative. Scanners report a battle-class cruiser on intercept. It's rogue simulants, all right. They've got enough hardware on board that thing to blast our smithereens to smithereens. <laughs> Recommend immediate total and unequivocal surrender. <laughs> what are they doing? Power up the weapons. Raise the force shields. We better return fire. Damage report. Fluke hit. They penetrated the engine core. Fifteen seconds to meltdown. Take them with us. Central weapons bank is down. We can't return fire. Then they'll find our corpse has a sting in its tail. Hack into their navigation computer. Transmit the Armageddon virus. See you in Silicon Hell. Enjoy the show. Looks like he could need some cover. Sounds like a job for the Riviera Kid. Uh, perhaps you didn't catch that. I said scramble! Uh, yeah, that'd be great with bacon and beans, man. <laughs> What is the point in having a battle drill if you're not going to take it seriously? No point, Monk. Good night. <sighs> Look, Starbug is a blazing inferno. Well, gentlemen, congratulations. Scrambling at a red alert situation, a new record time. One hour, 17 minutes, 39 seconds. Hey, not bad. And I bet we could get it down to 116 if we cut out that fourth round of toast. <laughs> 115 if we're headed without Marmite. <laughs> You think I'm a petty-minded bureaucratic nincompoop who delights in enforcing pernickety regulations because he gets some sort of perverse pleasure out of it. And in many ways, you're absolutely damn right. But that doesn't alter the fact that the only way we're going to track down Red Dwarf and get through this in one piece is with a sense of discipline, a sense of purpose, and wherever possible, a sensible haircut. I'm going back to bed. I know it always draws great snickers of derision, but I repeat, self-discipline and short haircuts maketh the man. Would it harm you to have hair like mine? Oh, for a really world-class psychiatrist. All right, OK. What about Napoleon? He had short hair, so what happened at Waterloo? Before the battle, he'd been on the march for a hundred days and sadly neglected my cardinal rule. An army marches on its haircut. <laughs> on the eve of the battle, the French forces looked like auditionees for a 1960s nude musical. Sir, that is preposterous. Napoleon's defeat was due to the unexpected late arrival of the Prussian forces. Oh, was it? Yes, it was, sir. And where had they been then, these Prussian forces? Oh, for God's sake. There's no evidence, I admit, but my bet? They'd stopped off at Eine Kutter über die Resten <laughs> for a brief cut and blow and a brief chat about their holiday snaps. Fascinating theory, man. You should write it down sometime with one of your non-toxic orange crayons. Try and get it published. Water off my back, Listy. Some of the greatest minds in history have been sneered and scoffed at. So some of the biggest idiots. Check your screens. I'm getting something up my left nostril, and it's coming in fast. Hmm. I say hit the reheat and pee right. You hear him? Let's go! 
I'm sick and tired of basing our entire navigational strategy on one feline's nose. I mean, I'm as much a fan of his right nostril as anyone. But I've made no bones about my lack of faith in his left. It's unreliable and frankly difficult to work with. Oh. <laughs> it's not unreliable, sir. It's just that the left nostril is ruled more by passion and intuition than the hard logic which controls the right. I still maintain we should have that nostril removed from active duty. Wait a minute. I'm getting something on both me ears. It's called drivel. Rimmer, can it? <laughs> the readouts have got to have something by now. It's directly ahead. The scan's still dry. Wait a minute. Getting something. Major power surge off the port bow. <laughs> Starboard. I thought I was facing the other way. He's right. Some kind of vessel. It appears to be uncloaking. He's too damn close. That power surge will toss us around like with a bead of sweat in an aerobic teacher's buttock cleavage. <laughs> We're deader than kipper ties. Hang on, here it comes. Damage report. Superficial. Navi comes down, slight rupture in fuel pipe nine, and somehow the pilot's headsets got jammed on the country and western channel. <laughs> Second wave coming. What's he thinking of, warping that close to another vessel, damned space hog? Something's materializing. <laughs> My god, that's a Space Corps external enforcement vehicle. What? The space filth. A computer-controlled enforcement probe. It's scanning us now. Well, we've got nothing to fear. We're fine, upstanding, law-abiding citizens. Then why is it in arrest mode, sir? Well, 75% of us are. Incoming. Property, core space removing and equipment, core space damaging. Ships, core space of series are looting with charged formerly. Are you? Two stroke, three beta, five vehicle enforcement, external core space. Is this? The materialization must have scrambled its voice unit. It's making about as much sense as a Japanese VCR instruction manual. I suggest I take the rap for everyone, sir. You can say that I held you hostage and forced you at gunpoint to do my evil bidding. For God's sake, Crichton, we can't let you do that. Really? Dream on, metal trash. Step up. <laughs> get your hands up. There's an old cat saying, if you lose a good friend, you can always get another. But if you lose your tail, things will always be drafty. <laughs> it's not as clear as my bathwater. What are you saying? I'm saying, if you hand over your tail, sooner or later, you're going to wind up with whistlebutt. <laughs> I swear, if you drilled three holes in his skull and blew through his ear, you could turn his head into an aboriginal hunting horn. <laughs> Minute one, have you? A thought occurs. If the orb's speech chip is reversed, there is every good chance that its logic chip is reversed also. Meaning? If we plead not guilty, the computer will think we're pleading guilty. But wait a minute. Don't we want to convince it we are guilty? If we can prove we did the looting, because of its warped logic, the computer's got to find us innocent. Good thinking, sir. On the other hand, if it finds us innocent, its reversed thought processes will force it to punish us. Whereas, if it finds us guilty, in its twisted thinking, it will let us walk free. <laughs> so where does that leave us? I'm saying, with all this warped and reversed logics, our one chance of getting off this thing is to plead not guilty and then prove our innocence. It's our only chance of beating that insane machine. Rolls-Royce logic, Crichton. The only micron-sized blemish on the Vandenpla finish of your reasoning is that we are guilty. We have looted derelicts. We're nicked. No choices, then. We leg it. Plot a course for Scarpa City. It's the lesser of two evils, sir. In the absence of a sane plan, I suggest we go with Mr. Lister's. You want to know what I think? No. no. <laughs> OK, Cap, on my mark, hit the reheat and harder starboard. Port. <laughs> Someone be messing with my chair. Seconds, 20, in firing, commence, will I? Reply or of absence in? A gelf icon carved out of the solid rock. Some kind of warning beacon. Incoming message. <laughs> Running it through the translator. This is gelf space. Death to the stranger. <laughs> Pulse missile launch, impact in 12 seconds and counting. Like all polymorphs, it's an emotional leech. It has the ability to steal emotions from living creatures. Emotions are a highly valued trading commodity. Droids and simulants are prepared to pay incredible prices. 
I'm not. Uh, well, my jacket. You want my jacket? Uh, no, sir. He doesn't want your jacket. He doesn't want me long johns, does he? Uh, not your long johns either, sir. Well, what then? Yeah. Sir, you must be the only person this side of the Ferris Nebula who isn't onto this. <laughs> me? He wants me. That's it, we're airtight. Damn thing can't get in now. And all it took was a little bit of concentration. Is it me or has he really changed since he got married? Stay alert, concentrate, buy life insurance. <laughs> How long before we can go? We don't really want a visit from Listy's in-laws demanding their wedding present back. Gravitational escape velocity logged and locked. Take her up. Still getting that Imahawk scent. Almost as if it's got on board. Maybe it's still on your hands. Your head reeks of it, too. Can you please stop playing Name That Smell? <laughs> Kindly get us the hell out of here. OK, don't crinkle your training pants. We're leaving. Engaging thrusters. That's it. We're clear of Gelf airspace. He won't suffer, Criders. I'll snap his neck when he's not looking. <laughs> won't feel a thing, believe me. He'd want it this way. He can't face the rest of his life carrying around a box of marmalade sandwiches, <laughs> clutching a thermos of beef tea. One twist, I'll crack his spinal column like it's a dry twig and put the poor wretch out of his misery. But, sir, if we could capture the creature, we could extract the DNA strands and re-inject you both. So, uh, uh, what precisely is the plan, then? I think you'll find it a little more comfortable if you uh, stand in front of me. Hmm. Uh, why are we in this airlock? Just relax, old chum. Just uh, sending you on ahead. I'm the scout party? Sort of, yeah. Hmm. Uh, can I ask you a question? Fire away, Mr. D. Uh, do you think it's wrong for a 32-year-old man to have uh, a yo-yo? <laughs> no, that's uh, not wrong at all. It's perfectly normal. Uh, and do you think it's do you think it would be wrong for that same man to sometimes stand around in his polyester balaclava and play with that yo-yo, practicing <laughs> snazzy moves in order to attract women? I can't do it, damn it! It'd be like the rotting Bambi. Dave, you crazy fool! We were all set to save your bacon. There's no need for you to put your love spuds on the barbecue. And you, Cat, would you like to stay as Dwayne? <laughs> Suck my thermos. <laughs> you never know when the next clutch thing's got <laughs> happen. <laughs> what a diblet! <laughs> But I'm a competitive man, Crichton. Always have been. That's what makes me what I am. We're all perfectly well aware of what you are, sir. <laughs> In our family, we were taught to be winners. Four boys and every morning, three breakfasts. You learn PDQ that losers don't eat. I've still got the fork marks in the back of my neck to prove it. <laughs> you sure it's your own childhood you're remembering, sir? You're not getting confused with Charles Manson, the early years. Scoff if you like, Crichton, but three out of those four Rimmer boys went on to become the creme de la creme of the Space Corps. And the fourth? Sadly, that turned out to be me. <laughs> Still, 75% hit rate. You can't knock it. Hmm. But isn't it true, sir, that in one way or another all your brothers went insane? That they destroyed the craft they were commanding and killed the entire crews? That's a bit personal, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, uh, here are the results now. <clears throat> You don't have any next of kin, do you, sir? No, they all died of heart attacks. Well, not just heart attacks. Aneurysms, strokes, brain clots, you name it. I think it's only about three blood vessels in our entire family that haven't exploded at some point. Why, there isn't anything amiss, is there? Well, sir, are you of the school that, when faced with bad news, prefers to hear that news naked and unvarnished?
I'm going to say this one more time, because you'll get a chance to change your mind. Think about it. Everything we've been through, does none of that mean anything to you? Well, OK. What have we been through together? Let's see. We attacked your ship, you attacked ours. Everyone on my ship was burned alive in hideous agony, while everyone on your ship escaped scot-free. I'm still not getting a warm glow. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Where's the rangy, handsome one? What, you? You scarbered in that escape pod, you slimy, triple-faced, backstabbing Judas. Ah, I'm safe, then. Thank God for that. Don't talk to them. You see what you've done now? Just get back to your own damn timeline. Let's get out of here, buddy. I'm so embarrassed. That guy over there is wearing an identical outfit. Everyone will think it's off the peg. Here we go, then. Well, be you later. What a wag. This is the personal log of Space Corps Hardlight Hologram Arnold J. Rimmer, formerly of the Jupiter Mining Corporation vessel Red Dwarf. Day one. After landing, I ventured forth to explore the place I would be calling home for the next two-thirds of a millennium. <laughs> a desert planet, the only life forms, the most basic single-cell protozoa and me. Relationships would be difficult, but not impossible. <laughs> I remembered the story of Alexander the Great, how when he heard there were no worlds left for him to conquer, he broke down and wept. It gave me strength. I thought, if it's okay for Big Al to cry, then it's okay for me. <laughs> I sobbed like a child for nearly two hours. Afterwards, I felt strengthened and resolute and decided to commit suicide immediately. But how? After much thought, I elected to shoot myself through the head with a flare gun. The attempt failed. When my sanity finally returned, I repaired to the pod to appraise the supply situation. Great silence for His Most Excellent Majesty. Stand to attention, mutant scum, while they play the anthem! Who disturbs our royal snooze? Rimmer World? I'm saying nothing, man. Don't want to spoil the surprise. Rimmer World was weeks ago. We're far more concerned at the moment about the quite hideous thing that's happened to Lister. He's right, bud. Where are you? Yeah, where am I? Uh, sir, we've seen too much already. We must be going. No, what happens to me? I've got to know. Uh, what was that? Thought I heard voices. Voices? Don't think so, Listy. You must have imagined it. Your bet. You haven't learned anything, have you, sir? One might almost be tempted to conclude that you truly are irredeemable, undiluted moral slime. We try, Crichton. We try. Oh, we're getting some bufferton. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. You've got to be able to see me. It's getting worse, man. Break out the safety harnesses. About to pass back into normal space. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> can you see me? Of course I can see you. You all forgot who I was, don't you remember? It's too weird in here. Let's quit while we can. All we got to do is keep our heads. <laughs> Remain calm. I believe anxiety prolongs the period of unreality. Look, chicken, I don't know about you, but I really do believe it's time to call it a day. <laughs> you guys, you've never had 11 pints of Dutch lager, have you? <laughs> this is like a normal Saturday night for me. 
Boy, this is worse than triple strength catnip. Picking up a craft. You sure? Absolutely, bud. My nose here's a vibrating more than a nervous blancmange in an earthquake. <laughs> He's right. Some kind of craft. Small. Here it comes. See you in three days. Autopilot set. Crichton, if for any reason we don't pull through this, I want you to know, I don't like you and I never have. Thank you, sir. That confirms everything. Engage Unit 2. Where are we? Did we make it? We can't just hang them out to dry. Well, in that case, sir, suggest that I am left alone to make contact. I can give them whatever assistance they require, then erase my memory of the entire event. Yeah, and what if you can't handle it? If, during the transaction, I lose my sanity and have to auto-destruct, at least I'll die knowing there's a month's supply of tasty pre-cooked mini-meals in the refrigeration unit. <laughs> And my life will not have been in vain. But I want to find out what happens to me, who I become, what I make of my life. Do you think that's wise, sir? What if you discover your future self is just a worthless space hobo, bumming around the universe with no sense of purpose or ambition? Or worse, Lister, you could have changed. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Are you really trying to tell me that you don't want to take just a little peek? There's an old cat saying, curiosity killed the human. <laughs> I say... We listen to the flat-headed one. Moi aussi. You've no sense of adventure, have you? No compulsion to tense the boundaries of knowledge. Reach out into the great unknown. Try something new and different. This from a man who categorically refuses to even taste my sprout lasagna. <laughs> <sighs> Opening comes. Present Starbug calling future Starbug. We are ready to communicate. Sir, you look terrific. I was expecting something much worse. Don't worry about me, Crichton. I'm fine. Absolutely dandy. Hey, it's nice to get out, get a bit of air. Well, blow me. You've hardly changed at all. If I hadn't been told about the accident, I don't think I'd even have noticed. Why couldn't you let him die? Well, gentlemen, I suggest we all sit down and discuss your requirements. I've taken the liberty of preparing some light refreshments. Uh, Crichton, uh, why don't you sit here? Haven't you got anything better than this hogwash? We're used to the best. Uh, we don't have your access to the finest wines history has to offer, sirs. I'm sure you'll enjoy the caviar, though. We've been saving it for a very special day. This isn't beluga caviar, it's Zavruga. How dare you fob us off with second best? Poison, bud. An insult to the palate. Crichton, we're epicures now. We travel through history enjoying the very best time has to offer. It's just a bit unfortunate that the finest things tend to be in the possession of people who are judged to be a bit dodgy. A bit dodgy? Hermann Goering is a bit dodgy? Vlad the Impaler, Catherine the Great, Nero. Those are the dudes that show you the best time. Too right. I mean, who the hell wants to go round to Mahatma Gandhi's for an all-night rave? What has become of you all? You've all abandoned your morals, been seduced by power and wealth. All you're interested in now is indulging your carnal desires. I'm a hero. Chilled margaritas, sirs. 
We have much to celebrate. Yes. Mr. Rimmer destroyed the time drive, deleted our future selves, and saved us all. Please, Crichton, it's not something I'm proud of. <laughs> Furthermore, we've relocated Red Dwarf's vapor trail and are barely six days behind. May I take the liberty of proposing a toast? To the present. To the present. present. <laughs> they are margaritas. That's your Heinrich Psych. 